Welcome to my 2011 Toyota Sienna camper van. And it looks like a normal minivan, which is kind of the reason I went with a Toyota Sienna. I can camp basically in any parking lot or suburb rural area. And I wanted to keep all the windows exposed. As you can see, there is a panoramic moonroof in the back here. And I removed the center console for getting in and out through the driver's seat. Built a whole kitchen around the subwoofer, 10 inch subwoofer down there, and uh, made a custom bed. Underneath here I have my storage for clothes. Uh, there are some little baskets attached but and little uh, zippered plastic covers on top for keeping things nice and clean. Here are the little cupboards where at the top one I keep things that I need access to a lot lower part there's blankets and some other random things that I need to keep. You have some storage behind the seats on the little back of seat covers. There's a little kitchen which I made with an aluminum bowl that I cut a hole in and a mini USB charged water tap which we'll get into a little bit later. Mostly I got the premise of the design from Eric Enjoys Earth. Uh, also watched a lot of other videos, some um, that were inspiring Bruce Parks and Travel with Rob. I found as uh, being as tall as I am, I wanted to have the bed at a height where I could have storage underneath, as you see here, uh, but also if I recline back here though, I can't quite fit. So this is actually the frame of the bed and I had it extend out in order to have, you see another hole here, uh, the bolt goes into that hole. Uh, so I call this my uh, office mode. So basically lock that back in place down there and then you go to the back of the van and there's these. They pull right up. Some carriage bolts. And I fashioned some big washers with duct tape around it so you can just kind of use it as a handle to pluck it right out. Uh, now what the carriage bolts do is the carriage bolts go through these holes and on the frame underneath you just slide this forward. Uh, you'll see these holes here. So there's a hole here, a hole here, and there's a hole even further and basically you just take those carriage bolts and you line it up with the next hole sink that hole carriage bolt in the hole over there and find it over here just like that now uh, the backrest is in an upright position which allows for me to sit comfortably here uh, and because I have the moon roof, it gives me an extra two or three inches of headroom, which I need because I'm quite tall. Uh, I come in here sometimes when I just don't feel like working on my laptop in the house or at a coffee shop, do my work right here. So I'll show you now how I set up my little table. It lives behind my driver's seat. Basically just pull this, this locks into place flip it around and then it latches right here into the aluminum um, piece here so you get a lot of natural light from the moon roof panoramic moon roof or all the windows uh, I wanted nice and bright light so I installed hardwired uh, LED light here that runs off a 12 volt battery that's rechargeable lithium ion uh, so you click it you get quite a bit of light uh, which is really nice for reading I haven't really made too many permanent adjustments to the van. I wanted to keep it so that way I could potentially uh, convert it back. And this was one where I made the decision where I, I wanted to have that light. So, yep. Um, it's also got blue mode, which is really nice at night. Just like the LED light in front, I added three of those same LEDs to the rear door uh, vinyl so when you open the door they're overhead lights they are permanent um, I did have to drill holes in the vinyl both there and for the switch another permanent feature is the curtain rail that I glued to the ceiling 
I put on little pieces of felt on the edge of the table so it can slide on the floor nicely and also a little piece of felt on the edge of the cabinet to slide it back without scratching against the wood. The table can also be used in the back of the van, very easily set up with the same mechanism. Works nicely with the chair. You can eat off of it, play cards, work on a laptop. Uh, this is just half inch plywood. I used half inch plywood for the bed frame as well. Uh, you can see here the thickness, it's just a half inch. Um, pretty thin, but it seems to work. Didn't want to add a ton of extra weight by having tons of wood weight. This is in couch mode, as I like to call it. And to convert it into a bed, uh, all you have to do is pull this lever right here, give it a little lift and a pull. I did build these in case I needed uh, extra support uh, for a bigger person or two people were sleeping in the bed. That way I got the extra support here the bed I wanted to have be a little bit bigger than me so it's six foot six so longer and wider than a twin not quite the size of a double then if I want fresh air which I usually do I just open this up and uh, cool breeze and can fall asleep looking at the stars the cushions are all made with a memory foam mattress that I ordered online I think I ordered a queen size and then I measured and cut each piece individually and then I sewed outdoor furniture fabric around to make them nice. Uh, you can see the seam here, corners folded, and uh, then on one end, just one end, I put the zipper, uh, tuck the zipper in here. So there's a little cushion around the memory foam as well just underneath the cushions. As you can see here, everything slides and fits right nicely, including the extra support, which are flapped on with magnets. Removing the bed base uh, is a little heavy, but it is possible, not that hard. Kind of get a picture of, of what it's like. So the front end here, front legs, uh, the backrest, and then the trunk flap right here. The general structure of it, uh, up in the corner up here is where it kind of extends. Uh, but all of the two by threes and the one two by four are all put there intentionally. They're all like where the piano hinges rest. As far as attaching the frame to the van, I took out the seat belts so I manufactured little metal pieces on one side and screwed that in to hold the frame and on the other side, uh, there's a turnbuckle. Putting it back, it's just like taking it out, slide it in, put the carriage bolts down. Here are the piano hinges that I used. You can see the difference. Uh, this is the stain, this is the natural wood. I used Ecos paints to have a stain and varnish, and I, I like how it turned out. It was kind of hard to work with, and it was a little more tedious than normal stain and varnish, uh, so I had to be very careful, but I do like the way it turned out. Uh, it's not exactly the color I wanted. I was trying to match the interior vinyl. It's a close color match, but not exact. Uh, largely I went with the Ecos because I didn't want to have toxic stains, off-gassing, uh, VOCs the whole time if I'm sleeping and living in there temporarily. Uh, so yeah, non-toxic water-based. So when I was building the cabinets, uh, I measured the distance between uh, this door and the bed frame and uh, figured that would be uh, enough room. Didn't factor in the cushion, uh, so unfortunately this bumps every time in the corner, so you gotta move it, which isn't a big deal. Um, and then that holds up in place. And uh, yeah, inside, then you got a drawer here, so I have access to this drawer through two different ways, through the front 
or through the side. Uh, this is great for quick access. You know, if I have a bunch of stuff on the couch. Inside there, can't quite see, but more storage. For the trunk underneath, just lift it up and flip up these little wood pieces and they get held in place by a tiny screw. Inside, keep a few chairs. As you can see, there's a fair amount of room when you take everything out. And uh, yeah, so I have, I think, three chairs and a little table. You'll see I have, um, these are the window covers. I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, those are all custom made. Uh, they have, uh, they are Reflectix. Uh, so kind of a bubbly bubble wrap uh, with shiny metal aluminum side to reflect. So they're all reversible. I can put this one um, on the left side and block out the, basically make it look stealth with the black. Or I can flip it onto the right side and have this facing out uh, if it's really hot and sunny and I'm leaving the van. It's keeping it under here for a while. See, I have a nice little light that is motion detected. Uh, I gotta take it out because uh, I have to recharge it. So I needed a way where it wasn't permanently fixed. There's a little magnetic strip that it, it holds to and then some tape. I uh, got the fridge here uh, where I can keep cool beverages. I like this ice co cooler. It's been working really well. And you can adjust the temperature. You can set this thing, it's got a divider in the middle. I took the divider out because I didn't want to have uh, a freezer compartment and a fridge compartment. I just wanted the whole thing to be a fridge, more space. So uh, it will actually go well below 30. Uh, apparently it's at 31 right now. Uh, goes below 32, but uh, I usually keep it around mid 30s. On the other side of the van, I have my kitchen area. Okay, cooking setup. I have this little table here. Uh, I just keep everything right behind the driver's seat. Cooking utensils. Okay, so there's latches here. It's actually different sizes. Uh, so this one back here, as you can see, is a little bit longer. I wanna say it's like 10 inches versus six inches here. Uh, I didn't want this metal piece when this folds, it would be planking here if it was longer. So there is more support on the far side, less on this side. So yeah, stove sets here. Uh, keep it behind the seat like I showed you, utensils. Uh, this is where I keep the cast iron right there. A nice snug spot for it. Pots and pans there. I got a bigger pan in back, but mostly I use the cast iron. Here's the layout underneath. We got all the stuff on the left there behind the seat as well as the subwoofer and amp. And then to the right is where I keep the plumbing water supply. Uh, gray water tank and clean water tank. Uh, it brings it all the way to the bottom. This is from like a, a, a Primo water pump where you physically pump it, uh, which I liked before I built my kitchen. Uh, when I just had this floating around in my van, that's the pump I would use. But now I have that little USB charged electric pump. Uh, this tube just slides right in all the way to the bottom. Okay, here's the little uh, water tap, which of course shows you can press and turn on. You can turn it uh, to wherever you want it. Basically it just kind of rests on a little wooden piece there. So it's kind of tight because this tube, uh, let me, undo this so basically the tube fits in there the wood piece snugs up against the sides so fit the tube on and then uh, pull it down it secures but secure but also uh, turns I decided to reuse the circle uh, piece of wood that I cut out from the top of the kitchen cabinet and use it as a cover for the sink a uh, little curtain here, uh, and then I have the 500 watt battery, which the fridge is plugged into here in the cigarette lighter, 
and you can pull it out by removing this little platform that slides out and then you have access to taking the battery out. It is plugged in behind here. This cable is running to a cigarette lighter which gives it a trickle charge. So the fridge is plugged in there. Uh, that's underneath the cabinet. And uh, yeah, close this off. I removed the center console. I realized it was just kind of getting in the way and I didn't necessarily need it. So I put a wooden floor in there, painted it gray. As you can see, I'm a tall guy. So uh, just a lot easier to get through. I'd rather have the ability to get to the front and back with ease than the storage that it provided. So the window reflectors here I have in place with the black side out. So from the outside it looks all black. You gotta kind of wedge it into the grommets. And I do have little tabs. Yeah, so the pull tabs make it nice and easy. Just grab it there and you can peel it away. Super easy. This rear uh, panel is overhanging, and so once in a while in the middle of the night, it'll just kind of fall down. Uh, so in order to keep it up, I tried to make it as snug as possible, uh, but even then, not quite always perfect. So I bought these. Uh, they're called aluminum flat bars. Wedge it in the top one, and then slide it into the bottom one. Two of them's usually sufficient. I bought several of these, uh, but I only really, I needed them for the passenger and the driver's side windows, but I took those away when I did the curtain. So now this keeps it in place. That's really all it needs. Uh, the blackout curtain is easier than putting up the other reflectix. Just have a nice sliding easy curtain there. Switch for the LEDs down here. Flip that and then, yeah, you got a light around the edge there. Did them behind the cabinetry there. Uh, so you can see, basically when I installed the LED, I kind of wanted to match this color here. Hard to see, but currently set a little more blue than green. These are the batteries, um, 12 volt lithium ion, rechargeable things. Plug in for the uh, LED strip lights, like that. And I just stick it in a little glove here, keep it protected and insulated. Slide that in there. Uh, all the wiring running out throughout the van. Uh, little wash, wash tub basin there, but this goes back into place. The floor is three quarter inch plywood, unfinished, and then the vinyl flooring I got at Home Depot. I also have some spacers, and then on the edge is the stair edge. Got this little curtain. I can just pull it out and lower it down, just like that. And I like to be able to hide the subwoofer when I'm in a area where I might worry about someone breaking into my car. Some more odds and ends, little features and things that I found that I liked. Got a foldable, collapsible, plastic, portable toilet that I hope I never have to use. Got this little folding light that I like. Uh, you know it attaches to the moonroof because it's metal. Anything metal, it's magnetic. If I need a little reading lamp. Now you wake up in the middle of the night, you gotta go to the bathroom. Tuck that. This little vacuum cleaner. And uh, yeah, works really well. That's been really helpful. Uh, underneath the storage here, um, I have a little stool. So yeah, I use that all the time. It's really helpful as a seat also uh, for getting onto uh, the roof of the car, like if I have to wash the car or something, um, that's just really helpful. I use it a ton and it fits perfectly right underneath the passenger seat. So I actually made this rug from a bathroom rug. Uh, I cut out about, I don't know, 60 to 70% of the rug. Just glued the two ends together. 
Uh, that way I can have a smaller rug that fits the space. I actually really just like the cheap, cheap chairs you can get at, I don't know, any, any store. Uh, the bed is long enough where basically I had extra room. So I do have baskets attached to the back of the under bed storage. So in order to get the spare tire in case of uh, flat, uh, you can just pluck this up. It's just a little sample of that same color and uh, you can just peel all this away, get at the nut underneath there and lower the spare tire. If there are no bugs out, I can open up this window a little, uh, rotate it so it's blowing on me. Little Velcro strip and then a uh, little tabletop. You could set your laptop or something there. Also got this uh, portable monitor. I bring it, don't usually ever use it. That's mostly it, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look. For my 2011 Toyota Sienna camper van, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. 